Hello, my name is Ambrosia Joy. I'm a native New Mexican. I'm raising my family here. And I'm coming before all of you New Mexico citizens and American citizens, as well as our friends who are on their path to citizenship uh, with a very deep concern and a true problem that you can help be part of the solution for. Um, I'm presenting you with a nonpartisan call to action. I can say this with a true non-bias as I've been registered independent voter my entire life. I'm a true coyote in the American way as far as my heritage includes Hispanic, Irish, uh, Swedish, French, Mexican-American, Native American, and Portuguese. Um, we're facing a crisis in the great state of, Amer of New Mexico which mirrors that of Venezuela and the travesty that has occurred there. And I'm going to explain that to you and what we can do to solve it. The governor that we have placed in office, Michelle Lujan Grisham, she has a blatant disregard for the New Mexico Constitution and laws, uh, the Constitution of the United States. She's overstepped her position by usurping the President of the United States and his authority over our Mexican-American border. She has removed troops from our border and his authority is guaranteed over the border by the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. And for those of you a little rusty on your history, well, first you can find it in our Bill of Rights in New Mexico, in New Mexico's Constitution. Uh, so that's Article 2 is the Bill of Rights. And in the treaty itself, it's Article 16. So Section 5 is where it's at in our Bill of Rights. So this treaty ended the Mexican-American War, and it wasn't fully proclaimed until the 4th of July, 1848, but it offered generous uh, provisions for the Mexicans, and it gained us 525,000 square miles of land in New Mexico, Texas, Arizona, parts of Colorado, Nevada, Utah, California, and it also guarantees that either president for either country can at whatever time, for whatever reason, safeguard that border in any way they see fit. Now, we did pay for this land. It's $15 million. It was paid in $3 million increments um, when, the, 3 million when the treaty was initially signed and at a 6% interest rate annually after that. Um, so in Article 16 of the treaty is where it stipulates that the president is the one with the control of both nations over that border. And by removing those troops, Miss Grisham has overstepped her authority. I think it's in her rush to kind of band together with like-minded individuals who are opposed to our duly elected president. Whether you like him or not, he's a duly elected president. And on top of that, she's praised and pushed forward legislation to begin disarming the citizens of New Mexico, uh, similar to what happened in Venezuela. Um, but it strips us of our rights to defend our families, our property, and we also have a guaranteed right to safety in our Bill of Rights. Uh, by opening up the border, she's seen fit to expose us to more dangers instead. Our rights are found under... Article 2, the Bill of Rights in the New Mexico Constitution, and the legislation that she's backing would disallow even spouses uh, from using weapons not directly owned by themselves in the defense of their families, their property, or even their very lives. And it took a mere four years in Venezuela after they confiscated their weapons before they were eating cats and dogs to stay alive. Um, I don't want my children or my grandchildren in the future to live in a state that is headed in this direction or, um, heaven forbid, even worse. Uh, I delivered mail up until recently for over three years and delivered your ads every Tuesday, the Advos, and we always have our missing children section on there. And I'm sure you've noticed, as I have, 
that the number of missing children has doubled. There are now two children per at, and they're usually from New Mexico, and we get quite a few from Texas as well, so definitely border states, definitely a border issue. Um, the one that most recently hit home for me was a, a young lady from Santa Fe. She had my name. Her name was Ambrosia Garcia, and beautiful young lady, and pay for her, everyone, but uh, it really, really hit a note for me and made me feel like we needed to do something. Um, so now I've discontinued working for the post office. I've gone ahead and gone into the school system instead. I now drive school buses, so I see your guys' kids five days a week, twice a day, and there are a lot of kids who, who don't have the luxury of a parent being there to drop them off or pick them up, and they're in a very vulnerable position because of this. <coughs> Excuse me. They may only take minutes to get home, but predators are aware of the time when kids get out of school, and they're just not in as safe of a space as all of us would like our children to be. And our governor is making that a less safe space. So, due to parents having to pull two incomes into households just to scrape by, I would know. Um, I'm trying to raise four kids, you know, so I know it's not, not easy. And our governor is also not improving the economics situation in our state of New Mexico. There's nothing that's being done to, to set in and place more safeguards for our kids. Um, we have a true obligation to protect our posterity. And so we need to do something. We need to be responsible. But we also have uh, to keep in mind our fellow Americans because we have a responsibility to them too. They don't all have this same border and it's our job to safeguard our country. We are Americans. We are patriots. There are plenty of countries out there that hate America and our citizens and every country in the world can see exactly what our weaknesses are on our southern border. They can see our division and how uh, really the left and the right are playing us against each other and making this some kind of political issue when it's not, when it, when it shouldn't be, when it's already historically founded that it's supposed to be guaranteed for the president to protect our border. And we have governors and people of all types going around talking and talking and talking that, you know, this isn't an issue, but I've seen it and it is an issue. And we have people from all nations, uh, including Middle Eastern nations, entering through our great state and spreading throughout America. They're putting all Americans at risk. And that includes the, the people who are on their way to American citizenship as well. Uh, everyone who's in this country is now more vulnerable. So we're all Americans, even those who haven't quite fully achieved citizenship yet. They're doing things the right way. They're doing things legally. And we need to be united. Um, we follow the letter of the law. And we need to demand that those that we entrusted with our very lives and our livelihoods do likewise. Both the New Mexico and the U.S. constitutions were written for our benefit. Treaties are made with the interest of both parties at heart. And laws are written for our safety and for our freedom. So being a native... New Mexican, I am all too familiar with cultural loyalty, especially politically, but we need to recognize how it's dividing us as Americans and not keeping us united as a nation. It's truly a nonpartisan issue and it will affect all future generations and all of our fellow Americans, present and future. Um, so I'm asking for your signature today and it's concerning a recall election for our New Mexico governor, Michelle Lujan Grisham. As New Mexicans, as Americans, as law-abiding citizens, and most importantly, as the caretakers of all of our 
future generations. Uh, this is something that we need to do. And I, I thank you for taking the time to consider this. And truly hope for your support.